Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and yet another episode of my F1 2018 career mode. Today we are here for run number 3 of season 6 for the Chinese Grand Prix. And if you guys didn't miss the last episode for the Bahrain Grand Prix, then do check that race out guys by clicking the card in the top right corner of your screen. There's also a full playlist link down below in the description if you guys want to get up to speed on season 6 and also check out Australia as well. But as you can see, we do have a very interesting weekend ahead of us because we don't only just have our first upgrades of the season, we also have rain for qualifying. So that's going to make things very interesting. It's also going to open up the strategy on Sunday. But as you can see, the three upgrades for this race, one in the engine and two in the chassis, specifically for engine power and weight reduction on the chassis. As you can see, we are the only team to bring upgrades to this race. So we are going to close the gap a little bit to Mercedes there, who are currently in P5. But all in all, sorry, P6 actually, and we are P7. So we've got to try and you know, improve that in that development race and try and close the gap as much as we can. Now, uh, China is one of those tracks where it's a good opportunity for me. You know, Australia's an okay track. Bahrain, the AI are pretty OP. And then China's the first chance where um, we're going to have a good, fair chance of beating the AI and, you know, getting a good result because back, back which is after this one, uh, and that's also another very AI heavy circuit. So they're going to be quite strong around there, regardless of whatever I do. So obviously for here, China, I want to try and cash in on this and make the absolute most of it. So it's imperative that we do have a good setup. The car feels good. And it's also imperative that we take full advantage of this wet qualifying um, with the, having the free choice start for the race tomorrow. Um, it's important to make sure we really maximize the qualifying session. So it's going to be intermediate condition. Uh, so the intermediate tires are going to be you know, the ones we go on, of course. And uh, there's no variation in the weather. It's going to be wet all, all the way through. So it's going to be quite consistent in terms of how the track feels, which is good. But it's still going to be a wet session. And after practice, we felt pretty good. You know, the, the McLaren was working really good. And I was very, very happy with it. But as you can see, with these wet conditions, it's a different ball game, different kettle of fish. And it's going to take a couple of laps to you know, get used to it and also see where the car is and then kind of find my confidence and then want to start pushing and trying to maximize the lap time. So as you can see, we're currently on the end of our first of three runs in this session. And as you can see, a couple of screen freezes over the lap kind of ruined my um, my first attempt and that screen freeze again there, just leaving the hairpin. Uh, that was quite a bad one. But generally, I did have a few frame drops in this session. Uh, I don't know why, but I was just struggling to really um, have that consistency with the PC. But as you can see, we do get a lap on the board and we go P3. Later on in the session, though, we will drop down to P8, so I had to go back out for another run, and this second run was actually pretty good. I had no frame drops um, during this entire lap, and to be fair, the lap was very, very strong. Uh, very few mistakes, in fairness. If anything, no mistakes at all, really. Just um, I could have gone a little bit quicker in a couple of sections, really. Uh, but the lap was very strong. We was on for a decent improvement, as you can see, already four tenths up or so as we now go into the final sector. And obviously, I knew there was time to gain, especially out of that corner there where we got the screen freeze last time. And we are currently eight tenths up going into the final corner here. And it's all about just feeding the car in, having that patience to pick up the power. And there we go, up to the line. Do we go fastest? Yes, we do. A momentary pole position here for now, provisional at least, until we get to the end of the session. But we're now going to move on towards my final run. And this was my best run in the session so let's stay on board here and let's see how the lap goes straight away turn one you want to go down a gear down to seventh and then you want to start basically timing the gears and downshifts as you can see the screen freeze made me run a little bit wide so we lost time to the delta luckily though i kind of bring the nose back in for a bit of a late apex and i managed to make up for lost time but the screen freezing not really helping me there and it cost me a little bit of time overall as we get the power down losing the back end slightly there on the exit of turn three but still pretty good nonetheless going flat out through form down towards the tricky turn five hairpin braking just after the 100 meter board uh, daring to brake late using the kind of brake bias to rotate the car and we do get a very nice uh, hairpin there and some good traction as well as we now go into the left right uh, six and seven the two fastest corners on the track pretty much in the dry and it's all about car setup and momentum through here keeping a nice tight line through the second one if possible and then you want to try and bring it back down for this double apex left you kind of want to sacrifice the first one to open up the second one and really focus on your exit and uh, traction as we go into this short little straight before we start the final sector as you can see we are on for an improvement here as we go lay on the brakes third gear action we lose our advantage but we do get a much better line this time a much tighter line through the right going into the banking here um, another little screen freeze there kind of cost me my lead once again and going onto the back straight was only a fraction up at the smallest of margins of an improvement here but uh, it could have been so much more if the screen freezes hadn't taken place but still we are up here with two more corners to go so let's make them count first of all the hairpin we're going to break bang on the 100 meter board down to second gear and then first to really get that front nose rotation but then the traction we get out of here is absolutely sublime and we find two tenths on traction alone as we now go through the final corner opt to stay in fifth gear not go to fourth 
and then we get the pad down once again very nicely out the front corner and we do improve on our lap and we do retain our pole position status with that improvement because if we hadn't improved then it would have been P2 I can tell you because Sebastian Vettel uh, found some time right at the end there but as you can see it's going to be our first pole position with the McLaren team and a very very unexpected one and also a very early pole if it had been a dry session I don't think it would have been possible the fact that it was wet kind of gave me that chance and um yeah, also this is good because obviously, like I said before, there's a free choice of tyre tomorrow in the race and everyone in the top 10 is going to have a free choice, not just those outside of it. So it's important to have the track position here and it's going to really open up the strategy and give us the best possible chance. So hopefully we're going to move into the race now. Fingers crossed we can make it work and we have some decent dry weather pace. Um, not, um, not as good as our wet, but still if it's good enough, then we can definitely uh, do a good little race. But that being said, let's jump into it. It's time for round three for the Chinese Grand Prix. Do you have a bit of a rivalry going on at the moment? Looks like you had a great qualifying session. It must be a relief being that far up the grid. The weather hasn't been ideal in qualifying. What's your take on it? Well, that's everything. Hard work, ingenuity and ambition. All things you'll find in abundance amongst the 15 million people of Shanghai over there to our southeast. And we've got plenty of that here on the grid as well. 20,000 horsepower, give or take, chomping at the bit to be unleashed for the Chinese Grand Prix. We're here in the Yangtze River Delta today, home of the 16 corners that make up the Shanghai International Circuit. 54% of this 3.3 mile lap is taken at full throttle and we'll be getting up to speeds of around 200 miles an hour with DRS assisting the cars down the back straight before they break into the sharp hairpin at turn 14. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Haas. We have a number of changes to the aerodynamic regulations this year, and the signs haven't looked good for them so far in terms of getting to grips with those changes. There are a few downcast looks within the team this weekend. I think they've been hit fairly hard by the new regs, but this is only the first step down a long road of development, and even if they don't maximise their points today, there are plenty more up for grabs this season. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. Martinez lines up on pole position and starting alongside in P2 is Sebastian Vettel. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Ricardo, Raikkonen, Charles Leclerc and Verstappen, Hülkenberg, Sainz, Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas, Ericsson, Alonso, Sergio Perez and Grosjean, Magnussen, Ocon, Pierre Gasly and Brendan Hartley. Stroll and Sergei Sorokin rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, here we are then for the Chinese Grand Prix. A rare pole position, first place on the grid. I did not expect it, therefore I want to convert it. I don't know if I'm going to have the pace in the dryer compared to the wet in terms of how good I was. Uh, but we're going to try our very best and see what we can do. I know for a fact this is a track similar to Austria where the AI aren't, I wouldn't say as fast, but... Compared to the op ness at Australia, Bahrain and Baku, this is a really good chance to get some decent points and a good result. I think, uh, realistically, worst case scenario, I don't want anything more than a top five, anything worse than a top five finish. It has to be fifth or above for me. Um, the standard's high. I want to maximise this opportunity and make it count. Now, in terms of strategy, we are starting on the soft compound tyres. We're going to transition to the mediums, a pretty simple one-stop on fresh tyres. And uh, we're going to have no tyre temperature issues like in, you know, before the patch. So, again, I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, being able to drive this track and not have to worry about my front left tyre. And uh, also, you can see the weather conditions for yourselves. We had our rain in qualifying. A little bit of cloudiness towards the second half of the race. But generally speaking, uh, nothing expected. And fuel-wise, we are 1.5 laps over. Not too heavy, but also I want to have some in reserve in case I need to pull away or defend my position but with that being said we're going to jump straight into it here at China I'm fully expecting everyone in the top 10 and beyond to be on the soft compound tires so it's going to kind of get rid of the strategy element in this race a little bit so uh, yeah let's see how it goes and hopefully we can have a good race it's time for round three at Shanghai for the Chinese Grand Prix right here we go we're going to get ready for the fiver lights here at the Shanghai International Circuit the lights are on and they are off away we go Good start, 
Vettel does react though, he gets a good second phase. That's going to put him on the inside of turn one, I'm going to try and go around the outside. Vettel making the move, Raikkonen also barging into me there, losing two places off the bat. In fairness, Raikkonen is on the ultras, so that's okay, he's on a different strategy. Who's in the back end there, Vettel is on softs. Two places lost off the line, not the best start. The actual launch wasn't that bad, it was just the uh, acceleration in the second phase, you, you just lack a little bit of uh, edge, you could say, but so far I'm not, I'm not too disappointed. The Ferraris are fast, so it's to be expected. We just need to try and settle into this race and see where our pace truly lies. I need to also readapt to these dry conditions after having, you know, just come over from the wet in qualifying. It's going to take a little while. Also got to get the tyres up to temperature. I think we'll be okay. Patience required. Ricardo's on me here, but he's not going to go for any moves. I think I should be okay. Just got to feed it through the banking, have a little bit of patience and find that confidence in the car to be able to push. There we go, good exit onto the back straight. That should give me enough of a gap to Ricardo. Yeah, there we go, that should be okay. And the Rockin is now attacking Vettel as well, so that's gonna be interesting. We'll see how that one plays out. Kimi is gonna be the fast one early on, so it's important that they battle a little bit longer the Ferrari so we can stay in contact if possible and uh, keep them within range. But I think Kimi's already got that move done, to be honest, he's just got too much pace on those ultras. Bear in mind, you know, that's two steps softer than the soft, so it's a very fast tire. And I think, oh wow, Vettel's actually re overtaking him, so that's good news. And also, the tires are just starting to come to me a little bit now. I'm starting to feel a little bit more confident, so let's try and make it count and try and step up the pace a little bit if we can. Kimi sets the pace. He has now properly overtaken Sebastian Vettel. The RS is enabled, so it's important to have a strong lap here. I want to try and stretch out the pack as much as I possibly can. So I'm going to stay focused and uh, Try and see what I can do. Mark is still pushing on. To be fair, we're um, lapping at an okay pace. I'm trying the best I can. I can definitely know this already though that this McLaren just can't compete yet with these kind of cars in the dry. But keeping Vettel in range, you know, visually he's not really getting away, but I can't shake off Ricardo as well, which is kind of annoying. But the good thing is the RS is enabled and uh, Ricardo hasn't really had a go at me yet, which is good. He does have a sour behind, so I'm guessing that sour is going to be the club. So I'm expecting him to start making moves soon. But so far, things are looking okay. Another strong lap. We open up the gap to 7 tenths. Ricardo is just struggling to keep up with me at the minute, but the DRS is kind of keeping him in play. I need to try and break that one second barrier. The second I break that one second window, I think Ricardo won't keep up. I think the DRS is really keeping him in there. Okay, feels like Ricardo has cranked up the engine here. He's within range. I'm going to have to turn up my engine a little bit and go defensive. Around the outside, Ricardo, a little bit of contact. I don't know why he got so narrow to me there. And I left him plenty of room on the outside, but either way, we have uh, managed to defend as Kimi comes in, so he's done with those ultra soft tyres. Vettel's going to inherit first place, and we're going to take P2. And uh, yeah, pretty much, we're doing okay at the minute. We're keeping hold of this position, but we are also on the limit, I have to say. I'm really pushing. Oh wow, Ricardo's got such a big run on me here. I'm going to have to go defensive. Overcooked it. Damn it. On the switchback, Ricardo's done it. I had to go defensive then. I overdid it on the brakes. I need to respond straight away. I'm going to have the RS of my own here on the pit straight. Come on. He's definitely turned up the engine. You can see how much he goes on the straights. I'm going to come back down the inside though into turn one. Ricardo's on the outside. That's not where you want to be. We are going to retake that position. Got to be careful though when I break late. Ricardo's really pushing me though at the minute. Ricardo again coming at me. Look at the speed and momentum in the Red Bull. Got to show him the long way round. This time I got the brakes a little bit too early, really. I'm going to have the inside though at the hairpin. I'm going to go for the squeeze on the exit. Stop him from trying to go side by side with me as we go into the final corner. Good run through there. Good exit. Yellow flag on the back straight. Will Ricardo get close enough? I don't think he will. And Raikkonen's out. So Kimi and the Ferrari on that two-stop strategy, it seemed, is now out. So he's out of the equation. So right now we are on a net P2 in this race, which is very interesting. Ricardo actually going to side by side, I think, behind me with Charles Leclerc, who's trying to make a move in the side. But this might be my chance now to open up this gap while those two guys battle. So let's try and do that. Ricardo again here coming at me. I'm going to have to go defensive to cover the inside. Into the hairpin side by side. 
do get the power down once again and we stay in front. I'm more or less able now to keep on the control. I know how to place my car, where to brake and you know what the strong points are. So that's pretty much under control now. Just trying to get to the pit window really and making sure that we get off these tires and finish off this stint. The Claire though, have another go at Ricardo into turn one we just saw there. Hopefully that's my opening and my chances they go side by side maybe through this section. Vettel's really um, picked up the pace in the throw, he started to really pull away now. Okay, Ricardo's within range here, we're going to have to use overtake. He's closer than he has been. He's got all the juice on the straight. I'm going to try and hang with him, but he actually gets the move done before the hairpin. So I'm just going to try and do the same thing as last time. Try and go for the rear overtake if possible. To the final corner. We'll clip of the bollard, but that's okay. Here we go. I'm going to have to use up some ERS as well. Pull to the inside. Good stuff. Inside line. And there we go. Job done. Textbook. Rear overtake for the second time this race. And this is now a scheduled pit stop lap so we can finally come in this lap and uh, hopefully open up a gap. We are literally parking the bus in this race. Hopefully nothing else gets past. Right, we managed to uh, not get attacked into the hairpin this time. So here we go into the pit lane. Let's uh, turn the engine mows down. Let's try and attack this pit entry if we can. Nice and aggressive if possible. Ricardo stays out so he's going for the overcut strategy. Get it slowed down, there we go. That was a good entry. Even with a couple of screen freezes, that was a solid, solid pit entry. Vettel was not going to get held up, he's away. And uh, we should have uh, one of the last pit boxes, so we shouldn't be held up here. I think Leclerc should go past, so that shouldn't be a problem. Here we go. There we go. Onto mediums, 2.5. Leclerc goes past, that's lovely. Looks like Verstappen's actually got the jump down a few people. In the red ball, we're going to come out just in front of Ocon here. He hits the back of me as we rejoin the track. I think that's going to cost him an end plate, but I mean, I had nowhere to go. He could see I was going to rejoin the track, so he should have just gone for a wider line. I was literally as tight as I could be onto the apex. So uh, critical that we rejoin in front of Ocon. That's going to be a little bit of um, a blocking mechanism, especially for the guys behind in the second sector. Now I've got to try and switch these tyres on. Ricardo is a threat on the overcut. A more emptier pit lane, and he's going to be quick on those tyres still. Especially now he's been released, however he won't have DRS, so he will lose a little bit of straight line speed. But still, Ricardo is a threat, so we need to try and switch these very slow and horrible feeding mediums on as soon as we can. Right, Alonso's in. As you'd expect, along with everybody else. Let's see where everybody is when we rejoin, or shall I say meet them. At the pit exit, up to speed. Ricardo's even the pit exit now, it's going to be close. There he is. He's managed to overcut me. Fair play. Ricardo's done it. Let's try and uh, stay within close proximity if we can. You never know if we can keep within his DRS. We can maybe do what he's been doing a race and just keep streaming him. But that's a bit annoying that we've lost the position there to the Red Bull. I'm going to have to get my head down and try and work for it. Ricardo's fast, he's very fast. I'm on for a personal best, but he's already switched on those mediums and he's flying already. I've not got the RS, I can tell. He's really just left the track, or joined the track and left the pits, and he's absolutely on it. Yeah, we don't have the RS, so uh, we're going to have to just probably accept we've locked, accept the feet on that one, to be honest, and try and keep in front of a snapping if possible for the rest of the race. Personal best, 1 minute 34.0, purple final sector. But still, Ricardo is uh, very strong, he responds. Let's see what we're like now. A full racing speed lap, Ricardo now. Will he still have high engine modes or will he turn it down a little bit? Let's find out. Ricardo sets the pace. He's the fastest man. He's even faster than Sebastian Vettel. So, yeah, we can't really match that. Verstappen also picking up the pace. Leclerc catching up to him. We're definitely spread out the pack, though, in that entire pit stop phase. Uh, we haven't got a train of cars behind us, which is good. I want to try and keep Leclerc a second out, if possible. But I think it's going to be inevitable. He's going to get within DRS at some point. We just don't have the juice around here. This McLaren is still a way away from being somewhat competitive. Ricardo faster still. Really strong pace. We can't match that. Although we have kept the stack 1.4 behind this lap. So the gap hasn't decreased anything, which is good. So it's just Ricardo who's going fast. Not so much for Stappen as it gets very overcast here now at Shanghai. No rain, of course. But, you know, track conditions and track temperature will change a little bit. Hopefully that benefits us. Verstappen's picked up the pace, he's within a second now. 
seven attempts to drift, and he's dragged Leclerc with him, so this is an over and out. About 10 laps to go, and we're in for a very long 10 laps. Time to get sweaty, boys. Okay, Verstappen's within range. Overtake ERS required here to uh, defend down towards the hairpin. Hot on the brakes once more. This time, though, Verstappen doesn't switch back. I'm not Ricardo, we stay in front. I did overshoot my brake point a little bit there into the hairpin, but still, nonetheless, we are going to stay in front. And uh, the pressure's on now. It really is. I'm starting to sweat a little bit, get really hot. I'm having to drive with no mistakes whatsoever, and it's uh, really, really complex, but we're trying our best here. I've made a small tweak and moved my brake bias to 52, and it's actually helping me out. I'm actually going for a personal best. I found a little bit of pace, however, Verstappen is just so relentless. The Red Bull is so quick. I'm so hot on the brakes, I'm going to miss my corner completely. I'm going to have to just bring it back in, but we've lost two places there for the price of one. Very bad driving from me there. We are now behind the Kler and Verstappen here. Can we get back past the Sauber? I highly doubt it. The fastest car on the straight on the entire grid. Oh man, I think I just ran away a podium. I'm actually just not happy about that at all. When I just when I thought I'd found a bit of a solution to my lack of pace. Down the inside of the Kler though into turn two. We're gonna get that one back straight away. Which is good. He kind of got sucked in there into Verstappen and running a little bit wide. If I can stick with Max this lap, which he definitely isn't as fast as Ricardo. Then we can make something happen, purple first sector. Let's keep our head down, this isn't over just yet, but I need to be strong. We just don't have the acceleration, you can see how much we miss out on corner exits. No, we didn't get the RS, wow, we lost it already. I just can't keep up. We don't have the juice on the straight, no acceleration at all. And look at this, Leclerc's coming at me here, he's too far back I think, or not. Look at that, what a dive and a half that is from the Sauber. Good switch back though, we're going to get the traction. Leclerc though keeps his car planted on the inside, he runs really, really deep into the final corner. And we are going to switch him back once again. And we're actually going to pick up the DRS this time around. But the podium's gone, both of the Red Bulls have done me. And uh, we're now fighting to finish in P4 this race. Also it seems like we're running out of juice now, ERS is very low, as is reserve fuel. We do have a nice gap to Leclerc, but look at that, Sauber just go on the straight, it's unbelievable. Look at it, he's, he's got me. Wow, from that far back, he runs deep. I think Leclerc must have front wing damage, but either way, that Sauber is just steroids on a straight line. It really is. Just having it held up by Sorokin here. This is my chance to catch back up. Let's not get too excited though. Sorokin does move, hopefully he stays out of my way as well. Thank you very much. Again, you see, good exit. Look how far back Leclerc is. You can barely read his name tag, but then He's going to be on me here before the hairpin. Look at that. Look at that speed. I went to cover the inside. Leclerc still committed to it. Picked up wing damage in the process. In my opinion, that's his fault. I uh, moved over. Did plenty of time to react. I'm sorry, pal. By the way, that's going to be the Leclerc out of the equation now. The front wing damage. 1.1 the gap to Verstappen. I can't get close enough in that DRS detection point, which goes onto the back straight. That's where I'm losing time. I'm fast through sectors three and one. But through sector two, Verstappen's got me on toast, and that's kind of annoying. Some information on Vettel. They seem to have an issue. Sebastian Vettel with car trouble, the race leader, but I think he's too far out to really be put under pressure by anybody, so uh, that's not really a concern. As we're still on for a personal best, but Verstappen's just got too much pace. So I think P4 is going to be where it's at this race. After that incident with Leclerc, I think it's game over. So yeah, we're just going to try and bring this one home, to be honest. Oh, VSC deployed. That can be a game changer. I'm not sure what it's for, but that can help us out. If we can save a little bit of VRS and fuel, have one last push towards Verstappen. But I think he's going to probably do the same thing anyway. So it might be, you know, invaluable, but still, it helps me just get things back on track a little bit and save. Okay, the VSC has ended. Up to speed, DRS enabled. We've definitely lost time on the straight. Somehow to Verstappen. I think Verstappen still must have been better off than mine. Or in a different kind of sync with the uh, Delta. I don't know. Either way, we've lost time. But still, let's get back to work here. Looks like it's a full Cindy that calls that VSC. Um, guessing a puncture or something. But either way, Verstappen's even further than before now. So I think the podium's off the cards. And it's just about bringing this one home, I think. 
Oh, Alonso actually just gone P5, I just realised he's got past Leclerc. But he's trying to now, as you can see, he's kind of battling with him. Which is good to see. Go on, Fernando. As we set a personal best into one minute 33s. Giving it that one last bit of juice. It's now back to sunny conditions, though. And Leclerc still going at it with Alonso as we run wide. Oh dear, that's not going to help. Let's just get that one under control, shall we? There we go. Lost a little bit of time there, just pushing limits too much. I think that's where we're going to call it a day. And uh, cruise to the finish and make no more mistakes, because that could have been a hell of a lot worse if I'd gone all the way around. Right then, here we go, into the final two corners. And I can tell you, yeah, there you go. Ricardo has won. Vettel's car trouble has cost him the win. And Ricardo snatches it here at Shanghai. Vettel P2, Verstappen P3, saying a purple lap on the last lap. And we are going to come home for P4. Not too disappointed with that. I'll take that considering the pace of the car. We just don't have the pace at the moment. Uh, we need to really work on performance. And you can really see this car still a long way away from competing for the top spots. You're beating all expectations. Would you say we all underestimated you? It was more like dodgems than Formula One today, wasn't it? Appreciate your time. Right, so looking at the final race results, confirmation of Ricardo finishing first, Vettel second, Verstappen third. We get fourth, not too bad, I'll take that, all things considered. Lewis Hamilton P5, Carlos Sainz sixth, Grosjean, Bottas, Alonso and Perez run off the top ten. Grosjean there sneaking in at P7 and Leclerc finished P11 in the end. I think he, uh, not sure if he just lost the, p the positions or what happened there, but Leclerc losing out right at the end there and also Alonso only P9 unfortunately when he was literally just P5 like two laps ago so a real shame there and a lot of points missed out on the team and, but uh, in terms of the rest of the uh, of the runners we've got P P P Pierre Gassi P12, uh, Marcus Harrison P13, Nico Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Hartley Stroll, Ocon, Sorotkin and Kimi Raikkonen the only retirement of the Grand Prix but in terms of what this race means for the Drivers' Championship as you can see Sebastian Vettel leads by three points over Charles Leclerc Daniel Ricciardo with that win jumps up to third place only seven points off the top and Raikkonen even with the DNF is still P4 nine points off top of the table and Verstappen there gets a few points as well to get himself into contention and we jump up to seventh place there so not too bad we gain a few points we overtake Ericsson and also Grosjean there as well and Alonso drops down to P13 having only got two World Championship points but in terms of the constructor stand we re-overtake Haas and we jump up to P5 so a decent result for us and Mercedes finally starting to get some decent points on the board as Red Bull overtakes Sauber for second place but all things considered a decent episode here today guys and uh, I think that was a successful one in terms of us you know delivering at a track where I knew there was a possibility of scoring good points so I think I'm gonna say that was a W in my book but uh, yeah pretty much that's gonna be it guys for the Chinese Grand Prix and uh, we're not going to have enough up, up, uh, points for upgrades for Baku, I believe. So we're going to save it until the end of the next episode at Baku to try and get an upgrade on the car. And hopefully those are our thick and fast now going into the European season. But if you guys did enjoy this episode of Crewman, then please do drop a like. And also get subscribed for daily Formula 1 content. And turn notifications to not miss a single upload from me. Finally check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching. And see you in the next episode very soon. But until then, it's goodbye from me.